All right. Put your hands together. Welcome, Seth Kwame Wote. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Kwame, welcome to the show, man. Thank good you. Good to KSM. see you. Um, good to have you here. I'm so <laughs> grateful. Yeah. My pleasure, my pleasure. And uh, it's, it's a little late, but it doesn't matter. That's a celebration of excellence. <laughs> we can do it any time. Yeah. So my belated congratulations for winning the Journalist of the Year. Thank you. Must be uh, really... How do you feel, man? Um, very humbling. Um, and I've been thinking of what else mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to either maintain the standard or improve on it. Yeah. And that, that has been my headache <laughs> since <laughs> this Because you can't go lower. I, I can't. I dare not. Yeah. So yeah. I've been thinking about that. But uh, God will help us go through. Yeah. It's not a problem. Yeah. The dedication is there. The dedication uh, is there. So. Yeah. The, the passion has not died yet. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it will die anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talking about passion, it's been said that people who are excelling things that they do, had that passion inside them from the longest time. Growing up, did you ever think, is it, was it a passion for excellence, that, so journalism that you had, or just the passion of serving people? Where, 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 did the, where does the passion come from? I remember when I was in primary school, I was asked what I would do in future, as in, uh, regarding the job I want to do in future, and I said I want to be a secretary. <laughs> 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 well, you know, yeah. um, I had a senior called Joseph PJ. Um, he was my school prefect when I was in Kumasi Amankwetia MA Primary School. Then, um, after some time, he worked with the Capital Radio okay. he, as a presenter, foreign gospel presenter. So one day I was listening to radio and I heard his voice. I said, hey, APJ is on radio. I also want to be on radio. Really? Yes. Wow. So Do you remember how old you were then? Um, I was around... Nine. Nine. Nine years. So I said, I afraid I produced voice on radio. I also want to be on radio. But I didn't want to be a presenter. I wanted to really, really do news. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get the opportunity until after secondary school. Uh, one Sunday morning when I was listening to radio, I had an announcement that a certain company was looking for a receptionist. Mm. So I applied. To be a receptionist. To, to be a receptionist. I didn't know that Love FM needed a receptionist. So... I applied, went through the interviews and uh, the other things. Then on a certain Friday, I was told, well, you have been picked, so you are starting work on Monday as a receptionist. I was supposed to do 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. I accepted. And I told myself, well, it's a stepping stone. Because mm -hmm. I really want to get Your to the newsroom. Your foot is down in the door. Exactly. I want yeah. to really want to get to the newsroom, so I'll start from here. So instead of going at um, 7 p.m., I always went around 3 or 4 p.m. And I'll first go to the newsroom hmm. and study the environment, study what hmm. they were doing. And, and I was asking questions. I'll ask all the tough questions. And by God's grace, I remember um, I got the opportunity to go to school after a few months as a receptionist at Love FM. Then when we went to school, um, University of Cape Coast, um, an incident happened on campus. Um, a boy stabbed the girlfriend. The girl hmm. died. Hmm. And I called Love FM. Hmm. That time, my news editor, uh, Saeed Ali Yaqub, Saeed, this, is, this has happened on campus. He, uh, he said, can you report? I said, yes. So at one, they called me and I filed a report. Oh, you filed a report? I filed a report in three. Wow. <laughs> that time, <laughs> Love FM did Those, both yeah, English and three. Yeah. So, um, you know, time we vacated and I went back to Kumase, back to Love FM. I went to the reception. I was there when Saeed walked in and said, follow me to the newsroom. So that was the genesis. Show some love, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you're working as a receptionist. You just have, have, have happened to file the news report for them. Exactly. When you're in Cape Coast. Exactly. And then you, you, got, you yeah, went to... Yeah, when school went. vacated. Wow. He said, follow me to the newsroom. Wow. That was is the it, beginning. Isn't it amazing how when you have your mind and the dream so strong in your mind that somehow the doors open? Because here you were, you decided to go as a receptionist. Mm. The next thing you know, you do a reporting. And then they take you to the newsroom. Yes. And you know, I believe in one thing, what the mind conceives, it mm -hmm. achieves. Mm -hmm. I conceived the, the idea that I want to be in the newsroom. Mm -hmm. And by God's grace, he helped me mm -hmm. achieve that. Mm -hmm. So I believe in that. Mm -hmm. I believe in positive mental attitude, positive thinking. Amazing. Even if I'm dying, tell me I will live. Yeah. That's all that I want to hear from yeah. you. Yeah. I hate people who, 
who are fond of uh, demotivating yeah, others. I don't yeah. like that. Yeah. Tell me you can do it. Just try. Just if try. I fail, and so what? Yeah. At least I'll try. It. Yes. <laughs> Show some love. I'm <laughs> very inspiring you now. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Mm. And, and look, look, look at the trajectory. You step in as a receptionist. You go to school, you file a report for them. They take you to the newsroom where you mm. always wanted to be. And then, months, few months ago, you are picking up an award as the Isn't it best amazing? journalist of the year. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, when I was at the reception, uh, I remember I wrote um, a speech. Mm. That was eight years ago. I wrote a speech. I told myself, one day, one day, I'm going to win an award. So I wrote a speech. And the acceptance been, award? Yes, and I've been rehearsing. Speech. Exactly, and I've been, I had been rehearsing. Uh, <laughs> Israel Ayi knows about this. Kujo Pronkuma knows about this. Samson Ladi knows about this. You wrote, about, you wrote that? Yes. Only, I so at times I will, I will sit, I will be in the newsroom and I will be rehearsing, I will be reading it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and they will tell me, you, you are crazy, man. Wow. So when, when I was nominated for, for an award, I didn't know I was going to win the Best Journalist Award. That morning, I picked the, 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 the speech. I that you have written eight years yes, ago. Yes, and you know, I've been editing every year. Mm -hmm. I've been editing. Mm -hmm. So I'll pick, I'll add some names. I believe in something. All those who have helped you, always recognize them. So I will pick the speech and I will edit. I will add some names. So that day, I picked and added a few names. And I said, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe today I'll have the opportunity to, wow. to read this. Wow. And God was good. I did. I did. Wow. Yeah. This is, this is actually... An amazing act, you know. That eight years ago, something you wrote. Yes. Yeah, amazing. That one day or day, I'm going to win an award, and I will read this. And you did. And I did. Wow. So you know the names I added. Um, when I wrote the speech, I had not married yet, so I had to have married. <laughs> <it, laughs> so have my wife now. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you written any speeches for the swearing of a president? Oh, you have you have you have you haven't considered uh, that yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not really interested in politics. Yeah. I don't know what. Never yeah. say never anyway. Yeah, I don't know what will happen. But what one thing else that you're interested in? What, this is where I discovered you. Mm. Your radio doc documentaries, man. Yes. You did a piece on sickle cell. Sickle cell. I almost cried. Oh. Because I am sickle cell. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, uh, thankfully, you know. But when I heard what people were going through. Mm. And thanks to you, that mm. documentary was so, I don't know. And, and how I got to uh, know of the condition of people who have sickle cell was amazing. I did a documentary on hypertension. Then the Ghana Health Service um, had a program. They invited me to be part. I got there, and there was a woman who came there to speak on sickle cell. Mm. As soon as she finished, I approached her, and I said, I want to do something on sickle cell. So I started asking questions. And I read a lot. I do a lot of research. Mm -hmm. I don't just mm -hmm. get up and go and mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. on documentaries. So I researched and I said, wow. Then I started making calls. Then I got to know that somewhere in the Upper East region, those who have sickle cell, especially children, they are cut with blade, yeah. hanged on fire, yeah. because they believe um, witches are in their system. Yeah. So the smoke are able to drive them away. I did that and it's, it's what I learned, oh my God, that in some of the communities, the people or people with sickle cell can't even afford, don't have five cities to even buy drugs. So they have, they have sold all their animals. Last year, um, in November, I was invited by the um, um, Global Sickle Cell Congress to speak at their uh, second congress in Brazil. <laughs> and, and can you imagine how they called me? They introduced me as Dr. Said, come and brought So oh, wow. I went on the platform and I said, excuse me, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> then they said, we have monitored you wow. over and again. And the kind of work you've been doing in Ghana, doctors are supposed to. Yeah. So don't worry if we called you Dr. Said, come and brought Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. Put your hands together, man. This is, <laughs> this is a... So, when, when you won the award, I wasn't, it didn't come as a shock to me. Was, and you've been doing some amazing radio documentaries, you know. And now I've you did one TV. on child cancer. Yes. That was also very, very, very well mm. done and so enlightening. And I did another one on circumcision gone bad. Okay, that one I didn't. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, the babies who have lost their organs through circumcision oh. is pathetic. Like, really? 
I, yeah, I did another one on Nangpandurui when they were fighting. Uh, I got there and I was arrested. It was a few times, so my, <laughs> we were arrested, myself, my crew, my cameraman and my driver. Um, then I did quite a lot of documentaries last year. Um, yeah. I, uh, people claim amazing documentaries anyway. Yeah. They were amazing documentaries, mm. you know. So for me, I had a few, you know. So when you won, I was ah, that's the gentleman. <laughs> He's very, very well deserving. <laughs> Extremely well deserving, you yeah. know. Um, what drives you? What will make you go to Nampanduri? What, what, what's, what's, what, what's, what's inside you driving you? Um, KSM, I wonder if what I went through as a child growing up, I wonder how many people can go through that and come out successfully. I come from a very, very poor home background. Growing up, what to eat was even a problem. I'll get up in the morning, I'll go to football field, search, look around if I could get coins to buy food. At times we cook without salt. How to even get 20 pesos to draw water from somebody's well was a problem. At times, I don't know uh, how come I was a bit smart when I was growing up. <laughs> when mm, we put mm. food on fire and we don't have salt, I'll come to your house, let's play police and thief. I'll be the thief. I'll make sure I go and hide in your kitchen. As soon as I steal your salt, you'll be the thief. I'll be the thief. As soon as I steal your salt, I'll say, I mean, you're going to be. There we go. And I'll go and put it in. Mission accomplished. Exactly. <laughs> so I, and I was asking, I've been asking myself how many people can go through what I went through yeah. and come out successfully. So. Yeah. Um, the kind of journalism I practice, my aim is to put smiles on the face of people. Wow. Wow. If I hear people have issues, I ask myself, what can I do mm. to help them deal mm. with the problem? Mm. And mm. that's what drives me. Mm. I, mm. I, I don't want to see people in pain. You, you I can't feel, stand you that. You other people's pain. Exactly. Yeah. I, I can't stand that. So I always do my best through the help of God to, to see what I can do to wow. put wow. smiles on the face of wow. people. Bless that's you. what drives me. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, beautiful. And, 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 and on the day that you won the award, I, the, the president, I saw the president whispering to you, <laughs> like, hey, tomorrow I'm going to go Because, you know, he told me he wasn't surprised that I had won the award and that he had monitored me over and again. Oh, okay. And he was telling me about um, a documentary I did recently on. On the prisons, well, the locked prisons, and forgotten. Yeah, I didn't mention yeah, that one. Yeah. That sent him to the prison, sent the chief justice to the prison. The chief justice ordered judges across the country to watch the documentary. Afterwards, she sent them to the prisons to, to wow. yeah, from to, your documentary. From my, yeah, following the documentary. So the president was updating me on steps he was taking to fix the problem. <laughs> so oh, that really? was what was going on. <laughs> he was telling me that I said, I'm doing this and that I've sent a delegation to Brazil wow. to work on this. To I'm going to fix the problem. All the issues you raised in the documentary, I'm going to fix them. That was what the president was telling me. Wow. wow. <laughs> now that's power. Says you're blessed. Thank May God continue to bless you. Thank you. And you have the courage and the passion. Mm. Continue to have that compassion that you have for humanity. Yeah. And what we are talking now is just the beginning. Mm. The best is yet to come. <laughs> Set. <laughs> Cheers a lot, man. All right. Stick around. We'll be right back.